I recently found two games that I really like doing on solo mode. This game here, Trekking Through History, and also Spirit Island, which is a more complicated game with a really neat solo mode. And if you remember this, I thought, hey, it'd be fun to, to ask you guys, hey, what do you want to see filmed first? What kind of video, what's my priority be? Because I like both games. I know I was going to get around the filming both of them, and them putting videos out of them, because I like them so much. But I thought, hey, why not ask you guys, what, what do you want to see done first? And then once I did that, I immediately started filming a playthrough of Spirit Island. Because I was so sure it was going to win, I'm like, I might as well get a head start on that. And then much to my surprise, Trekking Through History actually won. So here I am filming Trekking Through History. I will definitely get edited and put out first. If you're one of the ones you really want to see Spirit Island, that will be out here probably in a week or two. If you saw my review of Trekking Through History, you know that I think it is an absolutely awesome game. One of my favorite games I've played recently. Actually, I played it right after I made my video top 10 new to me games. So if I would have played it before that video came out, I definitely would have made it pretty high onto that list. But I think this game is really, really cool. If you have it, you might be thinking, oh wait, there's there's not a solo mode in there. And you're kind of right. There are actually some versions of the game do not have a solo mode included in the box, but there's print and play files you can get. And there's a link in the description down below. You can find that if you want to. So there is basically the, the publishers themselves have put out a solo mode version. It is really fun. That's what we're going to do today. And again, link in the description down below if you want to just get those files for yourself, print them off and play it. Now just take a second and just soak it all in. This game looks so good. What we have here is a big stack of historical events. I shouldn't look through it right now because I should know what's coming up next. And then a few of them dealt out here in front of me. What I want to do is visit these historical events that will give me rewards. Like this one here, for example, gives me a red token. This one here, a blue token. This one, a red token and two purple gems. Also, you'll see along the bottom here, actually on the board itself, there are some bonuses for going to that spot. So if I was to take this card, for example, I get that blue for going there. And then also I get a yellow on top of that. So those tokens are going to go right here. So let's say I actually did take this card, I put it in front of me, and I get this blue and this yellow token, and they're going to go into my itinerary. This is what I should be trying to visit throughout the day. This is three days in this game in total. So first day, here's my itinerary. I'm gonna take this blue and I put it right here in the top available spot, in the top available spot in the yellow as well. The way this scores is anytime you get a red or blue or yellow or green, it goes in the top available spot. If you ever cover up victory points, like there's three victory points there, there's four there, you get to score them up there on the board. And then also if you ever complete like a row like this, if I always get this red, blue, and yellow filled in, that is 11 victory points. Again, scored up there. And then also you see these gems here, that will give me bonus gems for my little crystal tank over here. Now why that's important is getting these cards don't have a cost other than the time it takes to go to the event. So this event right here, Haggle the Great Zimbabwe, takes three hours. Over here on the stopwatch, I have a stopwatch on this clock, and I'd move forward three hours for taking that card. If I took another card, it went two hours, go forward like this. But actually in this game, whoever's stopwatch is in last place takes the next card. In this case, it's a solo game, but my solo opponent here is red. So if I was to take this card and go three in front of them, they're going to grab the next card that comes out. And if they were to somehow take a two, they would go again. Let's say they take a four, they would go in front of me. You only have 12 hours to visit stuff. You got to sleep, right? You got to sleep. So 12 hours of visit stuff during the day. Once you get back around to this 12 again, the first day is over and we basically get ready for the second day. Now back to this crystal tank here. Whenever you want to, you can spend a crystal and reduce the amount of hours it takes to visit an event. So in this example, I could spend a crystal. This would only cost two hours. If I have three crystals here, you basically can spend up to reducing this down to one. You can never make it zero, but you can see some of the cards are cheaper, but also, you know, give you worse rewards. Some of the cards like this cost five hours to visit, but it gives you three different symbols. One last thing about gameplay real quick is you see all the cards have a date on them. One of the ways you score points in this game is trying to keep your dates in history. So for example, if I took this 41 BCE, and the next card I took was this 3, 8, uh, 1385, that would be in order. As long as you stay in order, you're going to stack your cards on top of each other. And you can see at the end of the game, I'm going to score bonus points based on how well I kept my cards in order. So if you were to get a stack of six cards before you had to restart your stack, that's going to be worth 10 points. If you got the 10 cards, that's going to be worth 30 points. Whenever you take a card that doesn't fit into your stack, if I was to, for example, take this one right here, it doesn't, it's not any long, it's no longer chronological, right? I would take this stack, put it away, and then just add it up at the end of the game. If you were to ever have only one card in a stack, it's actually negative three points. So you really don't want to have one card stacks there. And then up here in the corner, we have our ancestors. There are three cards that I can visit that basically are placeholders. They give you one while, which you can put anywhere you want to on your board, but they cost three hours, but their main purpose is they serve as a wild for the year as well. So they don't basically make you tack on years 
to your progress. So you can keep a track. These are called tracks going, keep more cards in order by using those ancestor cards, kind of keep them going. If there's not a card out there that keeps it in order, you can use one of those as a placeholder. And what happens in this game against other players is they're always taking cards you want, right? You're trying to think, oh, I really want this card and this card. This keeps me in order, but I'm worried a player might steal this card and I really need the red maybe. So I'm gonna take this card anyway. That kind of gameplay of trying to like get to the card before your opponent gets them. The solo mode is a great job of this. So here's what the solo mode looks like. This is what you'll actually print off if you get the solo mode online. You'll print off a sheet that looks like this. It looks like my itinerary, but it's twice as big and mine will change out every day. This will stay for the entire day. It has one giant itinerary it's trying to fill up. On their turn, the solo opponent will always take the card that is the furthest back in time, but continues their track. So for example, if it was a solo opponent's turn right now, they would hit this card right here. That's the very next thing. And they'd also get all the rewards. They get the this, they get a wild, there's a system for how wilds come out. This spot doesn't have a bonus, but basically they always get the same rewards I do. Their stopwatch or pocket watch moves the same way mine moves in that sense. But if you look at their board, they have some unique things. Like when they fill the first four colors up, they're going to steal one of my three ancestor cards, which kind of stinks, right? When they fill these two up, they're going to steal wild. So if you kind of look at their board, if they get to the bottom here, they're going to start scoring a lot of points. So I might start playing keep away. Like maybe I don't want to give them greens. If I give them all these greens, they're going to get all this extra stuff. One last quick note, I'm playing on medium right now, which means there's one special rule. If they ever take something costing four or more time, they will attempt to spend crystals if they have any to reduce them. So this opponent actually, just like I can spend crystals, will also try to spend crystals to reduce their big purchases. And with that, we're ready to jump in. I take the first turn as the human. Once the first turn's taken, there's just a consistent, not even back and forth the turns, it's just whoever is in last place is going to take the next turn. So we will, but definitely me and the solo opponent will have times where we take multiple turns in a row. And I'm just going to jump right in here and take the earliest card I can take. This one's actually earlier, but there's not a bonus for taking off the top of the stack. You see there's five bonuses down here. You're better off taking these. So this is pretty old, not the oldest, but pretty good. This is called Admiring Cleopatra's Dramatic Flair. So if you watch my review of the game, you know that the back of the cards have information about them, some you know, about the people, about the event, why is it special, why is it important in history. One thing I love about this game is you can just look at the front of the cards, play the game, do that if you want to. You can see the backs if you want to. Now, as you can see right here, the cost of taking this card is four hours. It's a pretty good card. So I'm gonna move this up one, two, three, four times. I also get a few rewards though. Off the screen here, I have a bucket full of rewards. It didn't quite fill in the camera very well, so I just kept it off the screen. It doesn't, you don't need to see it. I'll just pull in the tokens when I need to. So first I get a red. So I'm gonna put this red right here, top available spot. I also get a blue for the spot that's on. So the blue is gonna go right here. And this also says I get two crystals. So again, the crystals I can use in future turns to reduce the cost of a card. Also remember, I'm not just placing this card in front of me for no reason. This is the first card of my current track. So I wanna make this track go for as long as possible to try to score those end game points. All right, so onto the solo opponent's turn. What I'm gonna do just for practical purposes, imagine my itinerary, it's the dividing line. Everything over here is my stuff, my crystals, my track, my itinerary. Over here, I'm gonna keep track of the solo opponent stuff. So the solo opponent looks out here and simply takes the oldest card, which is this one right here, Hit the books with Alexander the Great. Again, if you want to learn more about Alexander the Great, flip over the card, you see that right there. But he is going to pay three hours. You pay your cost first, so three hours there. He's going to get a red and another red and then a wild. So we're going to take those rewards and put them onto his board. He has nothing for that. This one covers a three. So he's going to move up three victory points right now. And now we have the wild. And what the wild is going to do is go in the topmost available row as far right as possible. So it's going to cover this yellow right here. The top is most available row all the way to the right, that's a yellow one. The reason is, as you get to the right, they get more rare and difficult. You see here, it takes longer for cards to slide down to those zones. So it's a little more rare to get those colors. So basically it takes is the best spot available for them to take. And then just like my turn, we're gonna slide this over right there, but it's actually not my turn. Look over here, he's there. Even though he just went, he's still behind me in the race. So whoever is in last place over on this pocket watch takes the next turn. So he's going to go again. So we're going to look for the next available card, not the oldest. It actually is the oldest card, but it's not always. It's going to be the oldest card that continues their current track. So in this case, it's this one right here. It is the oldest card, but it doesn't have to be. So this one's going to go right here and he's going to spend a cost of four. Now, special ability here, he does have a crystal. So he's going to spend this crystal and reduce that cost down to three. So we're going to move up one, two, three. And now he's going to get the reward. This is a blue, a blue, a red, and a yellow. We're going to put all those things on there. We're going to cover up a three with those blues. So three more points there. The red doesn't cover up anything yet, and the yellow doesn't cover up anything new yet. But he did complete this first line here where it says for me to discard a crystal. So I lost a crystal because, again, he completed the three that was linked up to that right there. 
All right, so we're gonna move this over now. You can kind of see how my board works out here. I really want, I don't need everything completed, but I really want to see 11 bonus. So I'd love to be able to get a couple more blues, a lot more red, and two more here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take this one right here. I'm going to spend my time crystals. Typically I save them early game, but I want to reduce this cost down. So instead of costing five, it's only going to cost me three. So one, two, three. Then I get three rewards. I have a blue, a blue, a yellow, and a time crystal. In case you're wondering, you can't use the time crystals you're currently acquiring to pay for the card you are getting. So I'm going to get this time crystal right now. All right, so here is the time crystal. Here is the yellow, and here are the two blues. Now the blue actually covers up another time crystal when I do that. All right, then we're going to slide everything over here again, and my solo opponent gets the next turn. If you look out here, I actually thought he was going to take this one, but this just came available, and he's going to take that. That's the next one available chronologically, so we're going to put this one right here. It costs three hours, one, two, three. It has a reward of one blue. Now I'm kind of hitting decision time here. This is where the game starts to get pretty interesting. Even on solo mode, you have these really cool decisions. So I have a problem. I really want to finish three more reds and one yellow because I see 11 victory points. That's a ton. But also I could really mess up my track. I could play just for the track. The track is worth tons of points. I could go for this right here, get that, then hopefully next turn get something simple like maybe this one or this one. I could just really slowly, methodically march through march through time here and try to get all the cool track. But I also could really try to go right now for, okay, I really need some reds, but I wanna to try to finish this before time runs out. So I don't know what the best move is. So for right now, I'm gonna do the itinerary. I almost always go for tracks in this game. So just for fun, let's go for the itinerary. So I'm gonna sing right here, Sculpt with Michelangelo. I thought for some reason I'm a peripheral vision that was smoke of a train, but I guess I was seeing that card bleed into that one. That was a really weird optical illusion. So I'm gonna start out here by paying for this card. I'm gonna spend a time crystal. So it only cost me one hour to move. So I'm gonna move up one hour there and I get my reward of a red and a green. So the green goes there and the red goes there. Oops. All right, then slide everything down again. Okay, so I'm still in last place. So I kind of have a cool move here. What I'm gonna to try to do is finish this track up. I'm gonna only get to four cards, which isn't tons of bonus points. But again, I've kind of committed to trying to get this itinerary. So you can kind of go two routes, go for big tracks, try to finish your itinerary or try to balance both. Somehow it's probably the best strategy. But this is kind of cool just because it works out so well. I'm gonna take this card right here. Again, I get to go again because I'm still in last place. I'm gonna spend my time crystal. So I only have to move up one to take this card. I want to take it in this card here. I removed my, my one hour because that's my time crystal. I get a red, a yellow, and a time crystal. So here is a time crystal. Here is the yellow. And the red actually covers three victory points up here. So one, two, three. I put it in my track. Everything slides down. As you can see, I once again get to go again because I'm still, I'm in last place. There's a tie for last place. The person on top that goes next. So what I'm going to do is take this card right here. I'm going to cross the Rubicon with Julius Caesar. Now I have started a new track. I went backwards time in history. So basically I had to show up at the time travel station again, I think, then restart my journey. So I'm gonna take this right here. I'm just gonna flip it over so I don't forget about it and put it right here. There is my first track. And now I have officially jumped back in time. I'm hanging out with Julius Caesar. I'm gonna spend two hours to do that. I'm not gonna spend a time crystal. It gives me a red and it gives me a blue. The red completes my 11 points here. The blue doesn't do anything for me yet, but I do get the 11 points for completing that. So I'm at three and I wanna to jump to 14. Now, interestingly enough, you don't have to end right at the 12 hour mark. If I get right to 12, right on time, I get three bonus points, but you can actually take any card you want to and you still end there. So I can actually take a five on my next turn if it was available and helpful. I just want to get the three extra points for punctuality. But again, it's kind of a thing where you can always take any card you want to out here. You're just trying to decide which one helps you the best for itinerary with maybe trying to get those three bonus points, which is kind of nice, or with your track. So I'm going to slide everything over now. And now finally, my opponent gets to go again. It looks like the next card chronologically is a card I was also considering taking here. So we're going to travel the Silk Road with Marco Polo here. So this is going to cost them four. They have no time crystals to spend and four is one, two, three. They did not end punctually, which is good because they actually get the bonus points just like I do if they do. So they get four. They also get a reward of two reds, a blue and a wild. So here are the two reds. We got a five point covered. The 11 there. The blue is going to cover a time crystal. So they get that right away. And this wild goes in the top available to the right. That is this green right here, which gives them the time crystal, but it's also really dangerous. Because like I said, green is really valuable. You don't want them to start getting a bunch of greens. You can see there's a bunch of points here for completing that and also some of the bottom. So I guess they're all valuable, but green is just more rare. So that is one that I could possibly keep away from them if I, if I play it right. All right, so everything is going to slide down and I get one 
more turn this round. Unfortunately, whatever I take, I'm jumping forward quite a bit in history because I'm BCE right now, but I'm gonna go for the oldest one available because it does score me some points. I think I wanna do that. Man, even though it's a jump in time, that is really tempting. I think I'm just going to commit to the itinerary strategy, at least for this first day. So I'm gonna take this card here, even though it's a pretty big jump in history. It cost me five. Again, you can go as far as you want to on your final pick. So I'm just going to stop right there. I don't get the three bonus points, but this card is like perfect. I get a yellow, I get a blue, I get a wild and a time crystal. So time crystal is going to go right there. The yellow is going to score two points. That's going to score four points. That's six total. And now I have to decide this wild. Do I think four points is more valuable or another time crystal? I love time crystals, but I don't want to pass up on four points. I'm going to do the four point option. If you know this game really well and you know statistically the time crystal is worth more, let me know in the comments down below. I'm not sure. I haven't like actually counted up how much that's worth, but I, I think four points is not bad. If it was like two, I'd definitely go for the time crystal, but four seems like a pretty good move. So as you see over here, we have reached the end of the first day. Everyone has their stopwatches back here to the top. So what we do is the solo opponent works a little different than a human in this case. They're going to keep this out there. They're not going to trash their itinerary. For me, I trash this, it's gone. I can't re just reuse this one right here. All these tokens just get returned to the box. Your Trek stay out. So this is why it was such a big decision for me to jump forward so far in time. It scored me a ton of points now, but I'm already in the 1500s, almost 1600s going into the next day. All the cards out here get cleared. So we're going to clear all these cards here and go back. They're, they're all gone. If you look at the back, actually the front tells you up here too, but these are all age one cards. So they're finished. Again, the cards that are currently out there in Trex and our previously completed Trex stay out there. And I'm going to grab the age two cards here, shuffle them up and deal them up the same way we did age one. You know, I really shouldn't say age one and age two is really your first day of time travel and your second day of time travel and your third day of time travel in the game. Um, the days do tend to be on the later side, but, they, but they're all mixed up. As you can see, there's some really old ones here as well. There tend to be more newer days as you go along. You see some newer ones mixing. You're going to see more and more newer in the third as well, but they are all kind of integrated. So it's just skew a little later each time. So really this is my second day of time travel. I went home, I get a God good night of sleep. I'm ready to time travel again the next day. And because it's my next day at work here, I have to pick out a new itinerary. I'm going to go for this one here. You're allowed to peek at what cards are out there. This one has the most emphasis on red and there's red and red and red and red. So a lot of red is out there. I'm just going to go for that itinerary again, set these two aside that we use on the final day of the game. And I'm going to go first again because I ended up on top here. If I would have made it to the end first and he'd be on top, he would start the second day. It just, you look up here and say, hey, what stopwatch is on top? That person goes first the next day. So for my first pick of the second day, I'm going to go for hanging out with William Shakespeare here. So it's pretty close time order. I kind of need to get a good track in here for end game score, I'm sure. I can't help the solo opponent from taking this card here. I'd really like to hang out with Jane Goodall as well because she has a red and it's just a one hour to visit. But it, unless a card flips out that's next in the track, that's next up for them anyway. So I can't really prevent that from happening. So Shakespeare costs you five hours to hang out with. I do get a time crystal, I get a wild, and I want to get two reds for that. So there's the time crystal, there's the two reds. And this is a pretty difficult decision where I'm going to put this wild so I don't have, I haven't done anything yet this round. I think I want to put it on the blue just to kind of make sure I get access to this seven plus by the end of the round. All right, everything slides over and yep, I can't help it. So the next card available is all the way up here. Oh wait, no, 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 this one came out it is 1951. That's actually great for me. So they will take this card right here. It's gonna move only forward one hour. What am I thinking? It doesn't matter. They're gonna get a go so many times before I go anyway. So there's one hour. They're just going to grab a single red for that. And it is right back to their turn. They took the card off the top, so nothing changed. Actually, this card is the next one in the track again. So taking off the top when I first played, I thought it was a pretty cool advantage against a solo opponent. And maybe it is in the long run because they don't get these bonuses. So it probably is good, but also you want sometimes and it takes some cards out here to kind of clear it. So for me, there's not a card, a lot of cards out there that are going to let me stay in order anymore, right? So you kind of want them to do that. They're not going to, they're just going to take off the top again here. Um, this one here does cost them four hours. They're going to take the next turn again because they're still on top. So they're going to get red, yellow, and green. So the red says gain a wild. So we're going to also add a wild to this pool. There is the yellow and there is the green. Now, if you look right here, they have this take ancestor symbol. And not only are they going to this ancestor card, but they also get the wild from that ancestor card. So we have two wilds placed here and check this out. The first wild we place actually completes a row 
with a wild. So now we have two more wilds still to play. So we're going to put them in the top available rows. This one's a time crystal, and that one is five more points. So we are going to add five points to their score, and this just got a lot closer. That was an amazing turn. And on top of all that, this ancestor here, they have basically this ancestor here counts in 1953, just like that. They're getting a huge track put together. So this does not bode well for me. I better start playing better. But before I start playing bear, they got another turn because they're still on top. Even though we're tied, they're gonna move forward one because the next available card is chained here, hanging out with the chimpanzees. Um, this card costs one hour there. They're going to get this, a red, and a time crystal. There's a time crystal and there's a red, thankfully not activating anything this time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take one of these ancestor cards that have not been taken yet, put it right here. It's gonna cost me three, but I'm gonna spend two time crystals, make sure I go next and just spend one for it. Now again, this doesn't move the date, so it helps extend my track, but also it gives me a wild. I'm gonna put this wild right here on the blue space because I go again, I'm gonna get Martin Luther King, shared dream with Martin Luther King Jr., put it right here. This card costs three as well. I believe I'm not going to spend any time crystals for this one. Actually, you know what? I think I will, so I can go next. Again. So I'm gonna spend my last time crystal for that, so I stay there. This one gives me a red and two greens. And the red is going to cover the last one of those spots, and the two greens are gonna go here and here, so at least I filled up this row here, which is those seven points. Everything is going to slide down here, and then on their next turn, thankfully I stopped their trek. I was getting very nervous about their huge trek here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. After we get to eight, their next card is worth three more points. And then the next card is worth nine points. So getting to 10 is a huge bonus. So I'm gonna take this, these eight cards, and just kind of set them aside so they're out of the way of the camera. Because on their next turn, they have to jump back in time. So the rule is they take the oldest available card and they jump back in time, which is going to be playing Senate with the Egyptians. So right here, going to jump forward two spaces and they're going to spend a yellow and a blue. Okay, move everything down here. And on my turn, I have to really think about what I want to do here. I need to start playing some keep away from them because if they keep gaining all these greens, it's going to be really, really, really bad for me. So what I mean by that is this, like their green is going to give them another ancestor and I really want to get the next ancestor card, but I don't really want to get it now, though I could get the next ancestor card now. One, two, three, four, I have five cards, I go for that six card here. Hmm, it's an interesting strategy. So I can either go for the ancestor card now and claim the last one so they don't get it, or I could just jump back in time right now and get this green. You know, I'm gonna get the ancestor card. I think that's actually a better move. So I'm gonna do this. It'll jump me forward three spaces. It'll give me a wild. I'm gonna go here and make sure I get another time crystal for the end of the game here. Cause I don't wanna start my last day with no time crystals. And by going there again, I extend my track again. I think I'm happy with this decision here. So on their next turn, um, nothing's gonna slide down for them, but they're actually going to get the next available thing, which is hanging out here with Confucius, expanding your mind with Confucius. Everything is going to slide down and they actually get to go again, unfortunately. So, oopsie, I did that wrong. Oops, 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 oops. Take, take Confucius back, I'm sorry, Confucius. Um, undo this, I'm gonna take back the red and the green. Yeah, the next card in history, because I'm just not paying attention, is this. This comes first. They're going to spend the two, same two. They get two blues for that, actually. Five points right there. Okay, and then stuff will slide down. And yeah, so now Confucius is still the next card in order. So we're going to hit this one. They're going to go two. Several things are going to happen. They're going to three bonus points for ending punctually. Also, now they get this green and they get this red, which goes here. Nothing's affected. They still don't get the ancestor card because I nabbed it before they got it, but they are now done, thankfully, with this horrible second day of time travel where I'm just getting my sock speed off. But here we go. All the cards are out and it's back to my turn. I have at least one more pick in this day. So I have to go back in time. So at this point, I only can take one card. I can't just want to go back to the oldest one possible. Unfortunately, I have to end this trek before it gets too long again, but I'm going to take, um, I'm gonna hang out with a Colossus right here. It does let me end punctually is what I kind of want. I go one, two, and right on that spot, I get a blue and a yellow. The yellow is wasted, but the blue is going to give me two points. Now we're both done. So rather than sliding everything down, all this stuff is just going to come off. All the second day cards are gone. Once again, all the itinerary of the solo opponent stays on there. Mine goes away. We're gonna leave our treks out here and I'm gonna deal up the last day of cards. So I went home, got a good night's sleep and came back for one more day of time travel. 
Okay, so my last two itineraries here, I think I'm gonna go for this one because sometimes at the end of the game, I have saved a whole bunch of time crystals, so I go for a big one at the end. I don't think I'm gonna get to the best bonus of either one. This secondary bonus is a little easy to get to, so I'm gonna go for this one right here. And I actually take the first turn. This one's a pretty obvious choice, race a chariot. It's pretty close in order to where I'm at right now. It also gives me a yellow and a green. Okay, I'm gonna move up. Sorry, I move up two for doing that. Slide everything down and we are back to the solo opponent. He's gonna jump all the way forward and hang out working on the Gutenberg press here. So taking the Gutenberg press, move forward four hours. They are gonna reduce it down to three though because of their special ability down here. So one, two, three hours move. Also, we have a time crystal and a yellow and a green. Ooh, five points there, no points there, and a time crystal. Oh, I really want this card here. I wanna hang out with Leonardo da Vinci, but man, this is just so good. It's hard not to trek around the world. I'm trekking through history, but this is trek around the world. That's just such a good card for me right now. It does cost four. I'm gonna spend a time crystal and reduce it down to only three, but this gives me a red, a blue, a yellow, and a time crystal back. So we got a red, a blue, and a yellow. We're gonna slide everything down here. And like I thought, they are going to hang out with Leonardo da Vinci, which you know what? Hurts quite a bit because that's two greens and a red. And green is again, the more dangerous one they have out there. So three points for that one. They're going to not cover up anything yet, but that yellow is worth 10 points for them. And I am forced to discard a time crystal. Everything is going to slide down. So I'm between these cards here. Uh, Sigmund Freud's a little bit better here because I don't need all the yellows that card has to offer. So this costs three. I get a time crystal and a yellow and a red. There's a time crystal. My yellow is now maxed out. I almost have the seven bonus points here. Everything slides down and back to their turn. All right, so they're going to hang out on the English Channel. Now this is where their little bonus, this is a moderate medium difficulty. This is where this really comes into play. They actually want to spend these time crystals, reduce this down to three. If it wasn't for that, one, two, three, four, five, it'd be almost at the end of the day. But they're going to reduce this down to three and that could almost be what the game needs to beat me in this. And I'll show you why in just a second. They're going to get a time crystal back for this card. They also are going to have a blue. So this is going to make me discard my time crystal I just now got. Then also a wild. And the first available spot here for this wild is this 10 right here. So 29 points up to 39 points. Okay, so I did a little counting and I think this is going to work out. I'm going to hit this card right here. That time crystal kind of hurts. So I wanted to reduce this down to a three. So I can't do that anymore. But this allows me to go three here. I'm going to get a red, a yellow, and a green. So on my board, I have red. The yellow gets wasted, unfortunately, but the green gives me seven points. And my logic behind that, I saw these two blues right here. So I think no matter what happens on his turn, I'll get access to a double blue, which is exactly what I need for eight bonus points. So I think that was the best way to kind of play that end game right now. So we're going to look for the next available card for him. And he gets to hang out with Napoleon. How cool is that? So Napoleon's going to move four. Once again, he's going to spend time crystal on the three, which is somehow perfect for him one two three that's going to give him the punctuality three bonus points again one two three also napoleon himself gives him two reds a, two reds because of one up there a blue and a green all right so let's see the damage here we got two reds one red fits that's three points we have a blue which is no points and the next green is worth five points so that's a total of eight points i kind of lucked out over here and that they didn't get a few more yellows but I think when I've been successful in this game, I focused a little more on keeping away one color from them. I was kind of really focused on my own thing, but let's see how this works out. Let's see if I have a shot here. So flip over this card here. Okay, so this works out pretty well. I'm gonna take this card here. You might be thinking, why don't I take this one? Because it's a little better, but this actually gives me a blue and a wild. And I don't have to restart my trek, which is a huge bonus in this game because a restarting a trek is worth negative three points. Adding to the track is worth at least three points right now. So I'm going to get a crystal and the last wild is going to go right there. So I put the crystal in there. That's going to give me eight points. And then obviously I have to spend my cost a four. All right, and with that, we are ready to add up end game score. So we close our current tracks. I'm just going to clean up the cards out here so we can clearly see what's going on here. All these cards, the day three ones are just discarded. And the opponent ended up with two tracks here. I end up with three, but their tracks are bigger. So let's see what happens here at the end. So the first track here is eight cards, which is a bonus 18 points. So we have 10, 18 right there. So 18 points for that one. Second track is 
Second track is seven cards. That's going to be 15 more points. Let's see, that's 10 more there. One, two, three, four, five. So my score to beat is 83 as of right now. So let's check out these tracks. First one is four cards, four points. One, two, three, four. That does not look promising. I think it gets a little better as it goes along. Six, that's 10 points, up to 62 here. And the final one, one, two, three, four, five only six so i have 72 points plus one for the time crystal solo opponent plus two time crystal so i ended up here 73 to 85 points this is this is a really good solo game one thing i always appreciate in solo games so you can kind of craft that same feeling of the real game in the real game you're always like what card should i take what card shouldn't i and if you paid attention in this game i didn't do that very well it's kind of nice when you lose a solo game and at the end of the game you're like yeah i definitely could have done better i should have found a color and tried to play keep away a little more i got a little too focused on my own board and let them score almost 100 points with the top of the score track not that you can't ever get more than 100 points in the game is possible but that is a lot of points to give up so i probably got a little too hyper focused over here i should have tried to find ways to make him jump forward further in the track so his tracks didn't get quite that big if you think about it that way it's pretty close a couple tracks less for him Maybe a couple tracks more for me kind of makes up for the point differential. But whether or not I win or lose, it does a great job of kind of just dealing with a pretty cool light to medium drafting game that's, that's very welcoming. And then making a solo mode that gives you some pretty interesting decisions with what you try to keep away from them. Or you could do my strategy, not give anything away and just lose. And there's a different levels of difficulty. I found easy. I played easy once. I think I beat it pretty easily. Even this medium level throws some challenges at you. You can tell them spinning those crystals. To reduce the hours made a big difference. A couple more drafts here can really start paying off in your tracks. And once you get to the bottom of this board, all these bonuses start coming into play. Now, before we go, I want to mention there is something called time warps in this game, which they sit here in the center of the stopwatch and they flip out every day. And basically they change something. They change a the rule for that day, or they give you some sort of unique power you can use one time per day. They're pretty cool. I didn't want to use them in this playthrough. It's one of these kind of like simple and fast and quick moving. But if I do another playthrough this, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it and include them. I think it'd be fun to try another try of this medium opponent right here. It will get a little simpler with those. And basically, basically mostly just to show you, hey, this is what it looks like. This is how these, these time warp cards work. They are pretty neat, especially for replayability once you play the game a few times. They're nice to kind of give you that little variance. But other than that, thanks for watching this far into the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe to the channel. See a whole bunch more playthroughs. I do a lot of group playthroughs with Cassie and Joel. Also some solo playthroughs and some reviews and top 10 views and stuff of that nature. So see you there.